Hi, I'm Sean. I'm a H1 Maths student and I'm studying Maths in college and I'm here to help you go through your Leavitzer Maths questions, so let's get into it. So here's our question. Uh, we're dealing with a plane flying horizontally at P at a height of 150 meters above level ground and it begins its descent. P is 5 kilometers horizontally uh, from the point of touchdown O and the plane lands horizontally at O. Okay, so taking O as the origin, x f of x approximately describes the path of the plane's descent, where f of x is equal to this function here, and x is greater than or equal to minus 5 and less than or equal to 0, and both x and f of x are measured in kilometers. Okay, so the first thing we're asked to do is show that d is equal to 0. So if we just think about what we need to do here, what we're trying to achieve is just get d on the left and 0 on the right. So to do that, we're going to have to go back to f of x, and we need all of this to equal to 0. So in other words, we need the value of x that we need to plug into f of x in order to get out 0. So where y is equal to 0, we need to plug in that x value, and that actually happens to be the origin for this function because our y-intercept is the origin, and that's nice and convenient for us. So plugging in for the origin, we can see that everything cancels except for d, and so we end up having d is equal to 0. So of course that's exactly what we needed, and that's all we have to do for this part of the question, and for that we get 5 marks. Part 2, using the fact that p is the point minus 5, 0 0.15, or otherwise, show that c is equal to 0. And um, one thing I will say as well, uh, is that when you're dealing with functions, if a cubic does pass through the origin, it won't have a constant, so there will never be a uh, value for d, or d will always be equal to 0 uh, in the general form, so uh, that's also useful to know. So if we first of all just write down f of x, and we needn't bother writing down d because we've already established that d is equal to 0, all you have to do here is just plug in uh, minus 5 for x and hope that we get 0 0.15 out for the y value, or the f of x value. So f of minus 5, and what we're left with is 0 0.0024 times minus 5 to be cubed plus 0 0.018 times minus 5 to be squared minus 5c. So when you plug all that into your calculator, it's just going to cancel down to 0 0.15 minus 5c. So if we just take another look at the diagram here, we've already established that minus 5, 0 0.15 is actually a point, and that point is p. So we know that the right-hand side should be my, it should be 0 0.15, sorry. So given that, all, we've, all we're left with is minus 5c is equal to 0, and naturally c must be equal to 0 then. So that's it, just plugging in the point, and it all cancels nicely, and that's worth 5 marks. So now we've got to find the value of f dash x, the derivative of f of x, when x is equal to minus 4. So we're just going to back, go back to the question, and once again, uh, get our function here. But also just recalling the fact that we've already proven that uh, c is equal to 0 and d is equal to 0. So this is actually the entire function now. And for differentiating polynomials, uh, we've got a rule in the log tables, which I really recommend you learn, but I'll write it down anyways. So just in case you were wondering uh, where the rule is in your log tables, if you ever forget, uh, this rule here is the one that you're going to have to use for differentiating polynomials of degree n. And it's on page 14. So now that we've established our rule, we're just going to have to apply it here. So f dash x is equal to bring down your 3, 0 0.0024 x squared, plus bring down your 2, 0 0.018 x squared. And we can simplify this if we want to, and it just simplifies to this quadratic. And now that we've got our uh, derivative, we just need to plug in the value of minus 4. And we plug that in and get the answer. The answer is going to be minus 0 0.0288. So that's the slope of the tangent to the curve at the point uh, where x is equal to minus 4, which for reference is roughly here on the diagram. So that's the slope at that point. And for getting the value of your first derivative here, you're going to get 10 marks. In part 2, we're used to use our answer to part b, part 1, uh, to find the angle at which the plane is descending when it is 4 kilometers from touchdown. And we've got to give our answer correct to the nearest degree. 
So if we just go back up to our diagram for a second, we're looking for the angle, a very, very small angle it should be, uh, where the plane is descending. And it's this acute angle right here between the slope of the line and the line parallel to the x-axis. So in order to get this, we're going to have to get the slope at the point, which is, of course, the derivative of so dy dx. And by finding the angle which has a tan of dy dx, we're going to find our angle of descent. So if we let the angle be tan theta, so you use an error at the right angle triangle here on the right, we, we know or we should know that tan theta is always going to be equal to a over b. But what you should also know is that a over b is, slope, is the slope of c. And that's sort of the piece of knowledge they're testing for in this question is if you know, if you really, really know your trigonometry, and it's another example of trigonometry sort of smuggling its way into paper one again in the form of a derivative. So once we've established this, we can just let f dash x is equal to tan theta is equal to the answer we got above, which was is equal to minus 0 0.0288. So therefore, theta is equal to the tan inverse of minus 0 0.0288. So we're just going to plug it into the calculator now. Uh, we're going to press shift tan minus 0 0.0288, close bracket, is equal to minus 1.6496. And we're just going to put in plenty of decimal points uh, to ensure that the answer we get is accurate as well. But of course, the problem presents itself that this is a negative angle. And what we're looking for is, of course, a positive number because angles aren't really negative. So you might wonder, like, why, why is this answer negative? What have I gone wrong? But the only thing that's happened here is that we're dealing with an angle of descent. So when we're dealing with descent, it's treated as a negative value because in the negative sense, it's happening down towards the axis as opposed to up, away, up and away from it. So but we do have to convert this into a positive number uh, because we, we prefer angles to be positive and that's just sort of, sort of something you've got to remember. So we're just going to change the sign and round it to the nearest degree, which is two degrees. So quite a lot of thinking involved in that question and it's actually only worth five marks. So it kind of makes you think about how you should invest your time in the exam, uh, especially with these kind of difficult questions. So part C wants us to show that minus 2.5 0 0.075 is the point of inflection of the curve y is equal to f of x. So the point of inflection of a curve is the point at, at which the rate of change of the slope is equal to zero, or mathematically where the second derivative is equal to zero. So we're looking for where d2y dx squared is equal to zero. Of course, this is also f double dash x which is helpful to us in this case. So in order to get f double dash x, we're first of all going to have to get f dash x, which we found to be equal to 0 0.0072 x squared plus 0 0.036 x. So as you might have guessed, in order to get f double dash x, we're just going to have to differentiate f dash x again. And to do this, we're going to have to use the same rule in the log tables on page 14 that we've got, that we've already listed above. And that is this rule here. Again, for differentiating a polynomial of degree n. So by applying that rule, we'll find that our second uh, derivative is equal to 0.0144x plus 0 0.36. And we're going to let that equal to zero uh, to find the point of inflection. So by rearranging this, we're just going to get an equation, a simple equation for x, and we're going to divide across by 0 0.0144. And that will give us an x value of minus 2.5. So now we've got the value of x for the coordinate of the point of inflection. But of course, that's not the end of the question because we've also got to show that 0 0.075 is the corresponding coordinate of y. And to do that, we're just going to have to sub back in minus 2.5 into our original f of x. And hopefully we get the value we want. So when we, when we sub in minus 2.5 for x and plug it into the calculator, you will find that it is actually uh, correct and uh, 0 0.075 is the y value. So now we've shown what we needed to show. Although it is kind of nice just to do a nice little conclusion, you know, just to illustrate to the examiner that you know exactly uh, wh what you're doing, where you're going and what you've just shown. And for showing that you understand that and getting out the right answer and everything, you're going to get 10 marks. So D part one, if X, Y is a point on the curve, Y is equal to F of X, verify that minus X minus five minus Y plus 0 0.15 is also a point on y is equal to f of x. So first of all, we're taking for granted that this point is in fact on the curve. So we're going to be using that in order to prove that this point is on the curve as well. 
So as I'm sure you've guessed, it's going to involve even more subbing in in this question. And that's kind of been it. all we've had to do, you know, for the whole thing. But we've had to do it again here for part D. So unfortunately, there's no way to avoid it. And we're just going to let this equal to y, just to make the relationship between x and y clear. So now subbing in minus x minus 5 for x, we get all of this. And it looks long now, but it's actually going to get a whole lot longer when we expand it out into all of that. And so that's that's really, really long, but it's going to cancel down nicely in a second. Now for this cubic expansion uh, here, just keep in mind that there's actually a pretty simple trick to do this, if you ever forget, uh, just by using Pascal's triangle, as well as the two numbers who you are looking for the difference between. You can actually derive this formula here for the expansion of the difference between two numbers cubed. And in this case, our x is equal to minus x and our y is equal to minus 5. So that's just where that came from, in case you're wondering. And there's also a similar formula for the difference between two numbers squared. Uh, so just a small digression to tell you exactly where we're getting these numbers. So just going back to the problem at hand, uh, once you multiply everything in, uh, you know, from here all the way across, uh, things just start to cancel. So, you know, uh, you get this nice little cu uh, cubic here with uh, no coefficient for x and everything everything is as it should be. So the trick now is to spot that uh, these first two numbers actually are equal to minus f of x uh, is equal to minus y. So you can just let the whole thing be equal to minus y plus 0 0.15 from up here. And that's actually it. We've shown what we were asked to show, which is that when you plug in for x minus x minus 5, uh, the answer you get when af after you you know do everything right and cancel everything properly is actually a minus y plus 0 0.15. So we've shown that now, and that's all we need to do. So just write a nice little conclusion there that uh, we definitely know that this point is on y is equal to f of x. And for getting all that out, Believe it or not, you will actually only get five marks. So it seems like, you know, you've just wasted a lot of time if you've put all that time in, but uh, that's just how it is, you know. Uh, the hardest questions are actually usually worth fewer marks. So now finally for part two, we have to find the image of minus x minus y plus 0 0.15 under symmetry in the point of inflection. So now the way to find the image of a point under symmetry if we just draw a quick diagram, is to consider, let's just say, a point A, which is the point we're trying to find the image of. So we'll call that A, and we want to find the image of it under symmetry of point B, which we'll put here. Uh, the way to do that is simply to just draw a line from A through B and uh, make sure that this distance, you come out from B and draw another point C, and that's actually the point we're looking for. So C is the image of A, under symmetry of the point B. So hopefully that's helpful for this question. And now for our points, we're just going to let A be the point that we're trying to find the image of, which is this point, and B is this point here, which is uh, the point, the sort of middle point between uh, A and its image. So firstly, we're just finding the difference or the change in, uh, between the two x coordinates, which is uh, minus 2.5 minus minus x minus 5 which is sort of a mouthful but uh, that's what it is and the reason the minus 2.5 is coming first is because we always let the middle point come first and that's just the way it's done so the change in x is actually equal to x plus 2.5 and so the change in y we're just doing the same thing except with uh, the same you know y coordinates rather than the x ones and that's equal to y minus 0 0.075 so now that we've got our difference uh, or the jump we took from uh, A to B, we're just going to find the same thing except from B to C. So we're going to have to add that on. And so once again, just taking the point of inflection, we're adding on what we found, which is the difference there, the change in X. And our final X value is quite, quite conveniently going to be X and the same for Y. So therefore, uh, XY is the image. So that's it for part two. Uh, I don't really feel like they gave you enough space for that. So kind of squished but it actually is worth uh, more marks despite looking smaller and it's worth 10 marks 
And that's actually the last part of this question. So hopefully you found the video helpful. Uh, if you're looking for other similar questions, just to practice the same sort of principles, uh, there's going to be links in the description as well as other helpful videos, which maybe you might find quite informative. So all that being said, I'll see you next time.